Do you ever find yourself unexpectedly chasing someone who managed to somehow flip the script on you? You're not alone. It's happened to me a lot of times and it's something that happens to a lot of people. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to literally uno reverse this situation and turn the tables back into your favor so that you can gain your power back. And also stick around because we're gonna also talk about a real life situation that is in a similar situation to this and how they can outmaneuver themselves out of that situation. And Uno reverse on you and take back your power, all right? By the way, if you're dating someone and you gave them a shot to date you and that managed to flip the script on you and now you're the chaser and you wanna reverse the dynamics, well, you guys can book a one-on-one -on -one call with Father Alex and I could give you guys strategies on how to reverse the situation. Most likely it's not that you are unattractive. It's most likely you just did something strategically wrong. And the fog of war, the neediness, the creepy feelings that you feel um, tends to cloud you from making the correct mistakes. And sometimes mistakes causes you to make even more mistakes. So sometimes you need to hit the brakes, pause, call Father Alex, and have them listen to your situation so that I could give you proper material, proper strategies so that you don't have to go to hell. Yeah, that's right. So click in the description down below where it says work with Father Alex one on one and we can help you get this person without going straight to hell. Let's continue with the video. Now, when I'm referring to control, okay, I am not talking about purely manipulating people, you know, like none of that stuff, gaslighting, all that kind of stuff. Um, when I'm talking about control, I am more so talking about controlling your emotions okay um and when you have when people start manipulating you uh, when people start to take the power back from you literally like the, when when you're the one that goes from chasing from the chase to the chaser the difference is, is that now you're chasing the drug right now they're the drug right they're the before i hear people right here boom right here okay now they are the drug and you're the user okay now there's nothing wrong with that honestly um it, as long as it's a reciprocal relationship um what we're referring to here is situations that is one-sided situations where you gave them the chance you open up to them and now they take advantage of that and they start to pull away the uh, pull the rug of it under you okay and a lot of people do that to manipulate you um they give you a little bit of what you want the validation the sensation that you finally found something good and then once they know you're hooked, they pull away and then take the power back from you. Um, but what they really did, honestly, it's that they they just made you dependent. Oh, no. um, but you got to understand, don't be afraid to do this, because in order to find somebody that you like, you got to become dependent on them. The key is to be able to recover from these situations, to be able to deal with the pain and recover from them. Right, because when you don't think you could recover, that's when you start to fantasize. That's when you start to um, deviate from reality. Um, and so remember, don't give them this type of power, right? The power to control. Right, right, put my hair, sorry, people. To control, to some, corrupts them. Right, fuck my spelling people. <laughs> right, um, <clears throat> but you gotta understand, it's like a teacher. Okay, if you're an assistant teacher and you go into a room and you give off weak energy, the students are not going to respect you. The students are going to test you. The students are going to see what they could take from you, right? Because humans, that's just human nature, right? I remember um, when I was younger, um, I when a girl used, used to cancel like a date on me, I, I remember it used to ruin my day. It, it used to ruin my day. And I can promise you that reaction of ruining my day, I they could see it. In my, and, and maybe in the way I talk to them, right? They may they may not know, they may not see me react when they cancel on me, but they sense an energy about me, a needy energy that comes across as weak and that makes them feel a little bit more aggressive towards me um, because weakness elicits aggressive energy in people. It's like the cuteness overload where something's so cute you wanna squeeze it to death. Reverse. Reverse intimidation. This art of deterrence rests on three basic facts about war and human nature. First, People are more likely to attack you if they see you as weak or vulnerable. Second, they cannot know for sure that you're weak. They depend on the signs you give out through your behavior, both present and past. Third, they are after easy victories, quick and bloodless. That is why they prey on the vulnerable and weak. Um, so learn to be their drug than the opposite, right? Um, and the way to, to do this is to make 
make them feel how much they need you. And how do you do that? Well, when they start, when they start to try to reverse the tables on you, you just start to mirror them and literally pull away exactly how they're doing, right? Um, um, and and the, the reason why is because the way that they got you hooked is by giving you some of the some of their attention and removing it, right? To reverse this table, you literally have to give them like give them what they want, give them what they want, right? Which is your presence. And sometimes, honestly, this is actually people may not understand, people may find this um a little controversial, but I really do agree with this. That's needy for a short short while. Right for a very short while, so, so that you could strategically then pull away, and this pulling away after being needy um, creates a sense of like, what the fuck? I thought I had control over them. I thought they wanted me. I thought they needed me. Right? This strategy does work for that, right? Um, and and that's how they reverse the tables on you by giving you what you truly want, even acting needy, and then taking it away from you and pulling away. But actually, let's talk about this. There's, there's actually a story. That somebody sent in that has a similar situation to this that actually you guys can learn a lot from all right so the question goes like this right my story is about my manager that had a crush on me since i first joined the company he was very subtle spent a lot of time with me talking about casual things and life experience okay i never saw it as anything except that we were socializing girl cut it out however after six months of him chasing he suddenly stopped and became a different person. Okay, <coughs> moody, not initiating calls and texts, not inviting me to his office. Now what that says is that it's like, <coughs> oh my God, he's dying. That explains a guy who lost interest in you, right? Who tried to, to, try to be unprofessional and bang his coworkers, right? But you know, that's pretty much, he got tired of it. So notice what happens, right? Um, they, he was the one that was chasing and she wasn't interested. As soon as he stopped chasing, it's funny because sometimes you could do this where you can actually get someone who's not into you by chasing them, making them feel understand, making them understand that you like them, and then completely, instantly cutting it off because it'll catch them by surprise. Don't get used to you chasing. When you stop chasing, it like, wait, what's going on? I thought I had this person under my finger, right? Um, inflict the pain on me you see you see how pain works you know how people make fun of me for saying evil shit but it's because it works made it made it me feel insecure and hurt my ego i even confronted him about it he said i'm just being moody so now he started gaslighting okay which is a toxic sign right this made me feel terrible for two months then he started socializing but teases me made me feel sensitive this lead me to discussing with him my boundaries okay good for you but whenever we solve the conflict, we both felt closer. And that's the thing, right? Conflict brings people together. Conflict makes people bond together. But the problem is that if you don't have good conflict resolution skills, you guys will never grow together because you can only go through growth through conflict. That's just how it is. Um, so it's a character flaw not being able to have conflict resolution skills, which means saying, being able to say, I'm sorry, which means being able to apologize, which means being able to sometimes accept that you're not the only one who's right. But whenever we saw the, uh, the tables flip, I started chasing the way he chased. I concluded that he enjoys it. It's like he planned this all along in order for me to start noticing his crush instead of friends only him. So you didn't know he was chasing. We started eye flirting weeks ago. He is an introvert, but very masculine. Rarely speaks about his feelings. I started craving his confession about his feelings for me. I am a very feminine, beautiful lady with, with masculine traits, confidence, being direct, firm. I wanted to seduce him, hot and cold, being unpredictable, made him feel like he's a seducer. I showed him my dark side, anger, okay, okay, easy there, Hulk. I gave doughy eyes out of the blue. They all worked like a charm, as he never complained and kept going with the flow. Oh, now two questions, right? One. How can I make him confess his words, confess in words or a touch? Two, how can I make him invite me for dinner or an activity? I feel restricted and not being myself at all at work. He once told me I would try to see the, the real you somehow because we were discussing personalities and how I am former at work and different outside. Currently, he only engages when I initiate. He got too relaxed on the throne 
Help me, Father Alex. Okay, I got you. Let me tell you what to do. Let's go to uh, let's go to Buenos Aires. How do you make somebody confess their feelings for you? Well, notice how he got you to confess your feelings for him, right? You pulled away. I mean, he pulled away, right? Um, he, people only confess how they feel about you when they feel like they have no other choice, right? But whenever you're validating them for no apparent reason, whenever you're giving them um, validation, um, and they and they don't have to work to they don't have to work to really know how you feel, then they're not gonna tell you how they feel. You. It's like when somebody's dying and they're dying and you're looking at them and you're having that moment and you're like, I love you. You say shit you never said before. And then let's just say this person survives, God forbid. All of a sudden now, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I thought you were gonna die. I told you how I feel, right? You, we all feel an awkwardness, right? And so that's what you have to understand. Um, a lot of people don't tell you how they feel because they don't feel like they need to. Um, confessing their feelings is only because they feel like you're, you're pulling away or that they're gonna lose control over you. So they use words to try to control or try to change how you feel. So yeah, um, pulling away will cause people to become more emotional. When you become more emotional, like the Bible says, out of the, you, out of the, out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth, right? Um, so how do I make him confess his words or touch? Like I said, pull away a little bit. Just start doing what he is doing and notice how that made you chase. It'll make him chase as well, right? Um, how can I make him invite me for dinner or activity? Right? Like I said, start mirroring him, right? Do exactly what he did to you. You reverse the tables by literally doing what they're doing, right? That's literally how it works, right? Um, and if you're not willing to do what they're doing, then that tells me that this strategy is really more so a reflection of how you can control your emotions, right? That's why psychopaths, sociopaths, and narcissists can, be, can do so well in dating because they have one thing, which is no feelings, no emotion, no empathy, no, you get what I'm saying? So it's easier for them, but normal motherfuckers like me and you, man, yeah, of course, like you can't, you can't be playing these games on people because they're hard, it's hard to do. It's hard to control your emotions when you really like this person, okay? So let's talk about how to do that actually, because um, if you're gonna reverse the tables, you have to be able to be, um, to control your emotions or else you're gonna, you're gonna make, you're gonna make a mistake. Let's talk about this. So the most important thing, right, in controlling in controlling your emotions um, is pretty much control your fantasies, okay? Um, if you're able to control your fantasies, um, you control your emotions, and this is why. What usually creates craving for a drug is the mental projection of the future, thinking about using the drugs. Right, you're hyping up the experience of doing the drug, even though you know you're not, you're not get that high. Your brain says well, maybe we could chase the dragon, right? And those high expectations um, creates a desire for it, right? You'll notice that you start to tell yourself how great it's gonna be. You're gonna start, you start verbally affirming yourself how awesome it's gonna be, and this creates even more attachment to the situation. Um, one of the things I don't know, and this is honestly, I think this is part of um, cognitive behavioral therapy. It's just to um, if you have the habit of a falling, of being really needy, um, 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 become more negative, right? Um, tell yourself it's not going to work out. Tell yourself this person is not, it is not it for me. Tell yourself this person is not going to call me. Tell, you, tell yourself this is it. The reason why is because by you imagining that it's not going to work out, it literally gives you emotional control over your feelings. It gives you the control to be able to pull away. It gives you the control to be able to, to leave and be able to imagine the relationship ending. The problem is that when we're falling in love, we only think of the positive. And as a result, as a result, your emotions get out of control. Right. Um, and this because the reason why they get out of control is because it's not that's not reality. Um, it's impossible for you to um, it's impossible for for something to be so positive. You get what I'm saying? So this by you being so disconnected from reality it causes you to lose control. When you meet someone that you like and you think you have great chemistry, tell yourself it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. Or imagine that one day it's going to end by you tamping down those fantasies, those creepy fantasies that you have that tends to hype up the situation, it'll give you more control. As soon as you let yourself imagine that you're going to get mad and walking and with them and living in the castle, even though it's not real, your mind likes the fantasies. 
and it'll create an attachment to the situation without even you knowing the person like literally like just control your fantasies control lower your expectations always remember happiness and neediness is a function of expectations people always remember that um unfortunately some of us when we were children um never learned how to fully control our emotions we never felt comfortable maybe our parents when they tried to console us were too aggressive and actually aggravated us so as a result we wanted um validation and and and, and feeling better but the person who gave us the comfort was not doing it correctly so you learn to want but as soon as you get some validation you realize you don't want it but you're still left with the feeling so what are some ways that we can um, uh, control our emotions in a way that allows us to have the presence of mind because the truth is this is truly about developing presence of mind all right that's truly about that's truly about developing presence of mind um and the way that you do this right the first thing is surround with people no isolation isolation is dangerous um when we when bad things happen to us, when we lose control over our emotions, what usually people do is, is to isolate themselves. You are a human animal. You are a social human animal. You need to be around people. Unfortunately, pain, suffering, even with other animals, when an animal is sick, a lot of the times they self-isolate. Um, and that is problematic, right? What you want to do is be around people. Now, how do you do that? Well, first of all, it comes it, it comes with a decision. You decide to be around people, all right? Um, so if somebody, for example, if somebody broke your heart, you got to understand, there's a lot of communities out there, a lot of support groups. This, a lot of people think support groups is just for addictions. Think about it. If, if support groups help people with deep addictions, don't you think it'll help you in your needy, in your needy, creepy habits, right? This is a, those support groups for everything. Or even seeing a psychologist, or even just being around people. For example, if you run, join a running group, if you bike, join a biking group. And I'm in Buenos Aires now. I created an art group, right? For example, look, <laughs> I'm actually, it's kind of cool, right? I created an art group. Why? Because I'm in, I'm in Buenos Aires, man. I'm gonna be if I don't, if I don't meet people, I'm gonna be alone, right? And, and, and when you're alone, it's dangerous. Like it, it really is dangerous. So like, it's one of the easiest ways to manage your emotions just to be around people and have support groups. Okay. Now, um because isolation makes humans really creepy um now the next one is to connect with your body right what tends to happen is that trauma um trauma tends to disconnect us from the body think about it when something bad happens don't you notice how your mind how your body you literally lose sensation of the body when something bad happens you lose sensation of the body right and what you want to be able to do is to reconnect with the body because when you get traumatized, you lose sensation of the body. Even some part, some body parts become numb. When you start to reconnect with your trauma and start and start to heal, what what what, what always happens is that you literally return to the body. Anytime somebody's having a panic episode, they literally tell people to become aware of their bodies and their environment. So we're going to be coming aware of we're going to be coming aware of the reality. Shit, sorry, people, right here. The reality that is in front of you sensation this reality is always in front of you but it's always being opaque and, and and hidden by your mind made content whenever you become aware of a physical sensation you you the mind made content which is unhappiness depression um low self-esteem neediness lessons right why because the body use the mind uses the energy that you use to be aware of the body to enhance the mind made projections you remove the energy of the body of the of the mind by bec becoming aware of subtle physical sensations you become aware of those subtle physical sensations will literally remove it's almost like energy that you're taking away from your house to to energize something else you're literally removing the energy that the mind needs to create your unhappiness so you reconnect with the body so what i want you to do now this is a warning is if you have schizophrenia, any type of mental illness that causes you to be divorced from reality, talk to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a doctor before doing this because we don't recommend people doing that. If you have any type of those type of issues, unfortunately, I would recommend yoga, 
and light forms of meditations. Okay, um, so you become aware of these of, of, of a very subtle sensation. So when you be, first become aware of your nose, you want to become aware of everything that's inside here, everything that's inside this triangle. Just become aware. And what I want you to do is become aware of the physical sensations and notice the subtle sensations. What are what is the sensation that you that you're feeling now that maybe you didn't feel a minute before? And then you do the same thing. What am, what do I feel now that I wasn't feeling a second before? What what's now? What what am I feeling now that I wasn't feeling a few seconds ago? Okay, what am I feeling now that I wasn't feeling a minute ago? What am I feeling now that I wasn't feeling? You don't ask yourself that question, but you're just observing. What are you feeling now that's new? What sensations are you feeling that's subtle that you weren't be feeling before? And the more subtle, the more subtle sensation you feel, the more control you have over emotions, right? Uh, the more subtle the sensations that you feel, the more control you gain. Why? Because that subtle sensation was always there. In other words, that reality, because it is real, it is a reality. You, it, that sensation was there. You just were not connected to your body to be able to feel it. So by you becoming, by you feeling that sensation, the, these the subtle sensations you feel ten minutes from now. For example, if you keep meditating, is it, it's a, it's a reflection of how deep you're getting into the meditation. The more subtle, the deeper. The less subtle, the more shallow you are in the meditation, right? So what happens is that the, you'll notice that there are vibrations that are going on inside of here. The feeling of sensation is really a vibration. And these vibrations are subatomic vibrations happening at a quantum level. Right. And this is the ultimate reality. The ultimate reality of everything is this, that everything is vibrating by you getting in touch with this reality. It liberates your mind from the mind made prison of unhappiness and, 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 and selfishness. Right. So this is honestly an extremely, extremely powerful meditation. And this is honestly the beginning. I'm not going to teach you guys the rest because I can't, you know, but this is observing the reality and observing the subtle sensations and then once you observe that sensation observe those sensations with a calm and peaceful mind right so when you meditate you observe sensations and you relax your mind maybe you're agitated you observe that sensation and relax your mind maybe you want to stop meditating you observe that sensation and relax the mind you observe subtle sensation with a calm and peaceful mind right that will literally take you to a place a deep state of meditation that will give you control of your emotions right now the next thing is now this is uh, honestly I, i'm being hypocritical because i do do this avoid drugs and get good sleep um, honestly, um, especially like hard drugs, I just want weed, right? But especially hard drugs, cocaine, that kind of stuff, that will literally make you lose control your, over your emotions. So please don't even fucking try that. And good sleep. Good sleep will literally get, help you get over an ex. I swear to God. Don't you notice that you usually wake up being over someone in the morning? That's because you had a good night's sleep. Your brain finally processed the shit out of, that, out of, out of, out of them. And now you're over them. Okay? Now, the next thing is now this is also important for at least for me move move your body you gotta understand dopamine doesn't just doesn't just affect happiness dopamine is movement right you need dopamine to move um when you are not happy one of the best ways to produce dopamine is to literally move like don't you notice when you're a baby you walk you're happy creepy little motherfuckers right but that's because ha walking is a, is a sign that you're free right so naturally don't you think the body will reward moving with dopamine right that, i mean everything else everything else that gains dopamine that receives dopamine comes from movement so to re, to create that dopamine happiness you gotta move stop get out, get out of your bed get the fuck out of your bed and start moving practice play basketball jump around do yoga do something get the moving part one like in meditation in, in zen buddhism you not only meditate sitting you also meditate walking zazen right so movement is very important and too many people and this honestly goes to the isolation part when you are around other humans you move more it only makes sense don't you think right when you're around other people you move more when you're around yourself you don't move that much this was it's also one of the things about isolation that it does is that isolation causes you to literally move less 
and that's not healthy for you it's just not so you got to get movement going and and these things and, and and so movement now the next one is having a sense of purpose right and how do you know you have a sense of purpose this is the thing you you go to sleep thinking about it and you wake up thinking about it right that's how you know you're you have a sense of purpose and what that does is that it creates a loop where you're focused on something something greater than yourself so maybe for me is getting good at youtube maybe for me is drawing maybe for you is basketball and you're trying to get better at basketball maybe for you is knitting maybe for you is being a parent and you really focus on it and you're really trying to get good at it and you progress and you track your progress that creates it's in another channel of self-esteem, right? Another channel that makes you happy. Maybe you want to be a better basketball player for me, right? Maybe you want to be a better baseball player, but do something that requires progression and it'll, it'll laser focus your mind because your mind sees that as a challenge and your mind needs challenges, you know? And the, and, and these are the ways that if you just do everything that I said, you will have control over your emotions. Like you could miss one thing, but if you just do a few of the things that I'm talking about, it'll have more control. Now, so remember, these situations are not impossible, right? Learn to control how you feel. Learn to be your own source of positive emotions. As soon as you learn to depend on yourself in that way, to truly love yourself, to depend on your faculties, to depend on your body for happiness and peace, all of a sudden you'll notice that people will just become more drawn to you, you know? Um, the energy that you put outward to want their validation is what pushes them away. It's like a kamehameha of needing this. But as soon as you turn inward, become aware of your inner sensations, become aware of your inner reality, become around, become surrounded by people who are trying to fix the problems you're trying to fix. Surround yourself with people who are positive and not be self-isolated and find a sense of purpose. You will notice that people will just be more drawn to you. And any situations that you've been outmaneuvered into being a chaser, all of a sudden you become the, the you become the chase. And always remember, man, you deserve better. If somebody's not treating you the way you feel like you deserve to be treated, just walk away. You have my channel, all right? And because you have my channel, you have more power than you think you do. Just do what the video say, all right? Or else I'm closing the channel. Much love. So a lot of you guys have been asking me, how can I purchase all of your courses in one go? Well, if you guys want to purchase all of them, you guys can join the Mindful Attraction University, people. Yeah, that's right. And in this, you'll be able to access all of my courses for three ninety nine. dollars Initially, if you purchase all of my courses, Emotional Mastery, Psychological Game of Attraction, my new course, The Feminine Woman, Natural Chemistry, Charisma Blueprint, Nice Girl, you guys can purchase all of it for $600, but with the bundle deal, you guys can purchase it for $3.99. Or you guys can purchase it in three easy payments of $125, people. Yeah, that's right. Or you guys can purchase it with the bonuses. So you, not only do you get the courses, but the bonuses. And that comes down to $7.99 or four easy and mindful payments of $1.99. Now, these bonuses are not regular bonuses. These bonuses are legit, almost like courses within a course, right? So you guys can just click on the description down below and explore the types of bonuses. For example, I have bonuses on how to get over your ex, um, how to become more creative, um, how to, especially in the feminine woman, I have a bonus about how to penetrate the mind and how to speak in a way that gets people to do what you want them to do. Like it's honestly one of the craziest sections that I've ever made because most of these courses people are, I come up with those ideas in meditation retreats. Nobody goes to the extent that I go. I go to meditation retreats to create these courses. There's a 14 day money back guarantee. If you don't like it, just ask me for the money back within 14 days and I'll give you all the money back. Father Alex has never rejected a money back um, offer if I offered it. So, and if you guys already purchased one of my courses, for example, and you guys wanna get the bonuses while getting a discount, you know what I'm saying? I have discount codes for people who purchase my courses. So if you purchase my courses, just send me a private message. Or if you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll give you a big discount for the courses. And there I can help all of you guys. Understand that this is a movement. Most people never knew this type of knowledge before. And I am trying to empower women across the world and liberate them from these negative and one-sided relationships through these courses. So hopefully you guys can spread the message and help other people out. And I'll see you guys inside. Or else I'm close to the